Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Reese, ESPN's Patriots reporter. Bill Belichick in the news. And obviously, like a lot of people asking the question, how did we get here? Well, I was there every step of the way at every game, at every practice, at every news conference. And I'm going to take you through a timeline of what I view as some of the, the key moments that sort of led us to this point. And I always say, start at the pinnacle, start at the top. Patriots were on their way to another Super Bowl championship, their sixth under Belichick. It was January 20th, 2019. And the question was, could they win a big playoff game on the road? They're at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. And, you know, for all the, the greatness they had achieved to that point, they had never really won a big one on the road en route to a Super Bowl title. And that game against the Chiefs winning in overtime to me, it was one of the greatest wins of the Belichick era with the Patriots. I'll never forget Belichick looking for Tom Brady on the field after that game. They have a big embrace, and Brady says, that was a great bleeping game. And, of course, we know what happened after that. They go on. They beat the Rams in the Super Bowl 13-3. to And at that point, a lot of people asking after that 2018 season, going into the 2019 offseason, like, when is this dynasty, when is this reign ever going to end? And when I think back on it now, when we retrace our steps, there were sort of like little cracks in the foundation along the way. And I'd, I'd highlight three main things. Number one, um, an erosion of high-end talent. And we'll get to that. Um, a coaching change in 2022 on the offensive staff that set them back the way that whole thing went down. And ultimately, like the impossible task of trying to replace Tom Brady. So let's start there. That's like, that's where I start. We're going into the 2019 offseason. And what's the first thing or one of the first things that happens for the Patriots? Rob Gronkowski retires. Oh, great way to start your offseason. Lose one of the greatest tight ends of all time. Then the Patriots go into the draft. They're picking last in the first round because they just won the Super Bowl. And Nikhil Harry is the pick, a receiver from Arizona State. And in the second round, they trade up for Joan Williams, a defensive back out of Vanderbilt. And those picks never panned out. And we're sort of reflective of something I'll get to, just sort of a run of shaky drafting uh, for the team. And as this is unfolding, a key part with Tom Brady is unfolding. The Patriots adjust his contract that preseason and in doing so, they basically give him the respect of an escape route after the season. They boost his pay, and they write in the contract that they won't be able to put the franchise tag on him. And at the time, we didn't necessarily know it, but Tom later told Howard Stern on Sirius Radio that he had a feeling at that point he knew this was going to be his last year with the Patriots. So that 2019 season is sort of starting with some of these ominous signs the Gronk retirement the Brady contract you know boost but no franchise tag and what we come to find out is like the Patriots realize they they haven't stocked their offense with enough weapons so they try this Antonio Brown experiment for Tom really Tom was pushing for more weapons um, and that was explosive on and off the field he played one game for the team was productive and then is off the team uh, due to off-field issues. Um, and at one point, Brady, they're 8-0 in this 2019 season. And at one point, Brady tells NBC, I might be the most miserable 8-0 quarterback in the history of the league. So they're winning, but it's not looking great. And they had also tried to, they try to trade Mohamed Sanu, uh, gave up a second round pick for Sanu try to get more weapons for Tom. And it just starts to sort of peter out at the end of that year. The Patriots make the playoffs. They finish 12 and four, but they're not playing great ball. Brady had sort of forecasted the fall. They lose to the Titans and who's coached by their former player, Mike Vrabel here in New England in the wild card round of the playoffs. And I'll never forget being in that post conference, post game press conference with Brady. And we're all just wondering, like, is this it? Is he leaving? And he says, who knows what the future holds? We'll leave it at that. So that was the 2019 season. 
couple months later, Brady announces that he's leaving, says goodbye on social media. And you can imagine the reaction in New England. Um, the day that Robert Kraft, the owner, dreamed would never come. He wanted Brady to retire a Patriot. But instead, we have Brady leaving. We have COVID entering our lives. Everyone knows how that impacted everyone. Patriots go through sort of this abbreviated spring off season with COVID with Jarrett Stidham as their number one quarterback. They get to the end of it. They realize, I'm not sure this is the way we want to go. They signed Cam Newton, who had missed almost all of the last season with a foot injury uh, to a one-year, $1.5 million deal, and basically signed him to be their starter. Um, and it, at first, it looks like, hey, they, this might work. Week two, they're in Seattle. And listen to this. Cam was 30 of 44. For 397 yards, one touchdown, one interception. He had 47 rushing yards on 11 carries in the second game of the season. And at the, they lose the game, but it was exciting. And you're thinking to yourself, huh, maybe Cam, after all those great years in Carolina, could do it here in New England. But it quickly sort of went off the rails. COVID was part of that. Patriots had a game um, scheduled to go to Kansas City. Uh, it was supposed to be played on a Monday. Cam got COVID. Uh, they end up flying on Tuesday and playing the game that night. And the season sort of just tails off from that point. They lose four in a row. Um, and at one point in November, Bill Belichick sort of like tipped off to everyone how he viewed that season. He told Sirius XM NFL Radio, like, we didn't have any money to spend. We had sold out to win Super Bowls with Tom and with the contracts. Um, that we gave to other players that we had, we, we, we viewed 2020 as a reset year. And they end up losing to the Dolphins on December 20th, uh, 22 to 12. And that eliminated them from the playoffs. Listen to this for the first time since 2008, they finished seven and nine and Belichick stood by Cam Newton all that season as a starter. And it sort of led us into 2021 with like, what's going to happen here? Will they bring Cam back? Uh, who's the quarterback of the future? Will they draft a quarterback? Uh, it was a good draft class, you might recall, led by Trevor Lawrence. So here we go. Let's go into the 2021 offseason. Director of Player Personnel Nick Casario leaves to go run the Texans as their general manager. That's important because we're going to get into some of the shaky drafts the Patriots had under Casario and that continued a little bit under their new director of player personnel, Matt Groh, who started his career in New England in 2011 as a scouting assistant and worked his way up. They re-signed Cam Newton to a one-year deal, and then they just start spending like crazy in free agency. $163 million in guaranteed money in free agency. Hunter Henry, Matthew Judon, Jonu Smith, Devon Godchow, but not Joe Tooney, their franchise tag, uh, franchise tag left guard which is sort of um symbolic of a little bit of an issue they had of not necessarily always taking care of their own guys that they drafted and developed and robert Kraft, the owner said in march basically look we didn't want to spend all this money in free agency but when you don't draft as well this is what you have to do and we view that as the best opportunity in april julian edelman retires so remember gronk retired in 2019 now edelman their iconic receiver, drafted, developed here, retires. So that's another hit to your high-end talent. And then they take Mac Jones as the, the first-round pick, number 15 overall, in the draft late April 2021. So it's like Cam's still the starter, but you got Mac waiting in the wings, and then Mac takes over in training camp that year. Has an unbelievable joint practice against the Giants. Cam's not with the team because of a COVID misunderstanding. And they release Cam, and they're going with Mac, the rookie, as their starter in 2021. And Josh McDaniels, the offensive coordinator, is working with Mac. And at one point, they win seven games in a row. People forget this. A lot of people say, oh, when Brady left, it all went downhill. No, that is not what happened. Because in 2021, they won seven games in a row. And in a game... In Orchard Park, New York, December 6th, the wind is gusting. The goalposts are like shaking. 
Patriots throw three passes, but they win the game 14-10. And at that point, they are 9-4 and four, and the number one seed in the AFC, December 6, 2021. But they couldn't sustain it. They lose three of their last four. Uh, they, they make the playoffs as a number six seed, but they get blown out by the Bills. And so that's where we are. The end of 2021, they flash some promise with Mac, who was a starter the whole year. But then what happens? This is a key part of the franchise sort of spiraling downhill. Josh McDaniels, who did great work, the offensive coordinator with Mac Jones, he leaves to become Raiders head coach. And Bill Belichick doesn't name an immediate replacement as offensive coordinator. Patriots come back for their offseason program in April. No announcement, but Bill Belichick plans to make Matt Patricia, longtime defensive assistant, head coach of the Lions, the play caller. And Joe Judge, the longtime special teams coach, former head coach of the Giants, as the quarterback's coach. And a lot of people are questioning this, saying, really, is this the best move for the team to Good coaches who have won Super Bowls, but not in this type of role. And it was just a struggle from the start. Uh, Belichick wanted to revamp the offense, thought it got too complicated, asked Patricia to do that. So Patricia really taking the directive from Belichick. This wasn't like Matt coming in and cleaning house, um, but this was what Belichick wanted. And remember, they had um, struggled all preseason and you get to 2022 in the draft. They took Cole Strange, uh, offensive lineman from Tennessee Chattanooga, and they trade up in the second round for Tyquan Thornton, a receiver from Baylor. And similar to that 2019 draft I mentioned, these guys have really yet to emerge and really meet the expectations of their draft slot. And as that 2022 season unfolded, Mac got hurt sprained ankle in the third game of the season against the Ravens. Bailey Zappi comes in, creates a little bit of a spark. Mac comes back, but he's not fully healthy, struggles. Belichick puts Zappi back in. The crowd's cheering, Zappi, Zappi, Zappi. And the dynamic between Belichick and Mac never seemed the same after that. Patriots finish 8-9 and nine in that 2022 season. They're out of the playoffs. Mac was... 288 of 442 for 2,997 yards, 14 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, well off the pace of his rookie season. So here we are. After the promise of the 2021 rookie season Mac had, a lot of questions. Is Mac the guy? What are the Patriots going to do at offensive coordinator? Can they get this thing back on track? The day after the season ends, Owner Robert Kraft, his son Jonathan, the team president, send a, a letter to season ticket members. And it says, we can assure you no one is satisfied at what unfolded this past season. We're going to be making critical uh, 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 evaluations of all elements of our football operation as we strive to return to the playoffs. Just remember that word, playoffs, because that was the expectation going into 2023. Four days later. Another announcement from the team. Bill Belichick is in negotiations on an extension with longtime assistant coach, or I shouldn't say longtime assistant coach, but former player and assistant coach Gerard Mayo to stay with the team long term. And interviews are underway for a new offensive coordinator. That was a significant announcement because a lot of people wondered, like, is that Belichick making the announcement? Is that ownership? Is Belichick on board with this? Two weeks later, they announced the hire of Bill O'Brien, their former offensive coordinator from a decade ago, to come back, and Mayo's staying aboard. In March 2023, Devin McCourty retires. Iconic safety for the franchise. Going to be a team Hall of Famer. So remember, you had Gronk, you had Edelman, now you have McCourty retiring. Free agency. Jacoby Myers, Mac Jones' number one target, leaves to go to the Raiders. Wanted to stay. Juju Smith-Schuster's coming in to take his place. And people like Teddy Bruschi, Julian Edelman, Devin McCourty are saying, what's going on here? Patriots sign a couple offensive linemen, which was their top need. Riley Reef, Calvin Anderson, they haven't panned out. They don't really address key needs that a lot of people in the media had talked about. Receiver, offensive line, 
They give an extension to receiver Devante Parker, 14 million guaranteed. They lose out on DeAndre Hopkins, free agent pursuit. So a lot of questions surrounding the team entering the regular season and what happens. Week four, they were competitive the first three weeks of the season. Week four, Mack implodes, throws some terrible interceptions against the Cowboys, carries into week five, pick six against the Saints, and things are starting to go off the rails. And I would say one of the low points, November 12th, Frankfurt, Germany, Patriots, a game they've invested in means a lot to ownership because that's their international territory. They got a great fan base. One of the top fan bases in Germany uh, is the Patriots. And they just put a dud out on the field. 10-6 loss, late interception by Mac. A lot of questions. Do they stick with Mac? Do they go to Zappi? Uh, they ended up sticking with Mac coming out of their bye the next week. And he struggled in the first half against the Giants. They make the switch to Zappi and they haven't looked back, but just a, a lost season. Injuries were part of it. Uh, Bill, bringing in Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator, didn't necessarily work out the way they hoped it would. Talent, clearly an issue. Um, losing those top players. And here we are. You know, they, they're, they're looking at a top pick in the draft. And the question was always there. Do you let Bill Belichick make that pick? Or do you sort of make the big change? And that's how we got where we are. Obviously, a lot of things happened along the way. But those, to me, were some of the key points along the way that highlighted how we got to that, from that championship moment in Kansas City into the Super Bowl to beat the Rams to where we are now, where we are now, the Patriots trying to get back uh, on track in the NFL to that championship level they were for so many years under Bill Belichick. 